Hi, this is Postgres SQL for MySQL DBAs. My name is Dave Stokes. I'm a technology evangelist for Petrona Corporation. And in this episode, we are looking at materialized views. Why this series? Well, it's a guide for MySQL DBAs who want to explore Postgres. Uh, it's kind of hard getting started by yourself. And this is kind of a guided tour to get you to explore what Postgres has, uh, stuff that it does differently, and things that it does that MySQL does not do. One of those is materialized views, and this is a big deal for some users. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But once again, uh, materialized views aren't in MySQL. So if you've been raised on MySQL, uh, this is brand new material for you. So first we're going to go through why views as a refresher for, for those who don't use views on a regular basis. Why materialized views and how they differ from regular views. And then we're going to do a demo. And yes, there is a quiz. And the answer to the quiz will be in the demo section. So quick review of views. Why views? Well, they have several uses. The most interesting one is that you can use them to hide underlying column and table names. Uh, the users might have access to just the view, but they don't know where all the other pieces are being assembled from. So they don't know any of the details of the base tables that are used to build things up. Uh, by the way, if those base tables you're joining have uh, lots of columns and you're only getting one from here, two from there, and three from wherever, uh, you don't need to pull back all that data. You just need to get the specific rows, which makes it a lot uh, simpler and put it into one virtual table and have all the users draw off that feature virtual table. So it becomes a common shorthand for the required data. And one of the benefits of this is that you, as you change the underlying structure of your tables uh, and your application keeps evolving, they get a consistent interface, but you can change the view as needed. <laughs> By the way, the views are great places to keep aggregate sums. You want to keep, keep things like averages, moving averages, uh, sums, uh, basically anything in a windowing function away from your pure data, keep the data as pristine as possible. But in the view, you can run all your, your averages and aggregate functions. By the way, most cases, views take up much less space than the underlying table or tables uh, when you put them together. Plus, you can build views on top of other views, which comes in handy. And you can use a view like a table. So let's take a look at building a table and creating a view from that table. So I'm going to create a simple table called base, three columns, A, B, and C, all integers. And into our new table that we call base, we're going to have three tuples or rows with these values. And then we create a view. Uh, creating a view is very simple. Create view, a name for a view, and then as, and this is a query that you plug in. In this case, we're getting column A, column B, and the value of column four multiplied times four from our table base. And we do a select all from B1, our view. We get the values for A and B, and the values for column C multiplied by four. And as I mentioned earlier, we can use this view like a table. So if we want to look for values where A is equal to 4 or where A is greater than 6, uh, we can call this out and use it as a table. Now here comes the quiz. Uh, we created the view V1 and select A, B, and column C multiplied by 4 values from the table base. And we can select A and B from our view v1 and get the values. But what if we want this, the c times 4? How do we get that? And we can't call it c because it's not defined as c. So how do we get that value? And the answer will be in the demo. So materialized views, how do they differ from regular views? Well, first is the word materialized which basically means it's a static snapshot. Two key words, static, which means it doesn't change, and snapshot, it's a view in time of the data. So 
big difference when you're creating a materialized view is you have to put in the word materialized. So create materialized view V2 and I'll select A, B, and column C type or multiple by four from table base. And once again, we can use it like a table. So we can select star from V2 where A is greater than six. Now, do me a favor and remember this value of 36. We're going to need it shortly, but remember 36. Now, one of the things you have to worry about with a materialized view is materialized when. So if we update table base, where we're going to set the column B equals to the value of 99, where, where column A has a value of 7, and we do a select from V2 back with this, like we did earlier, so we know that A is equal to 7. Notice that we don't have B updated. The underlying table has updated, but the materialized view itself has not been updated. They don't do a, a continuous update. Now, you can get that by refreshing a materialized view. And then by doing that, refresh materialized view in the name of the view. And this time when we do our select from our, our view, we have A is greater, and whether A is greater than six, we now have column B has been updated. By the way, we're removing materialized views is one step different than getting rid of regular views. Drop materialized view V2. And now we're going to go into a short little demo. So I've logged into my local test instance, and I can create a table. Table. Base. It has three columns. A is an integer. B is an integer. And C is an integer. Oops. Insert into base values a, oops, one comma two comma three, one comma five comma six, and of course, seven, eight, and nine. And if we do a select base going up, oh, I can tell it what to select. Now let's create a view. E1, and we're going to find that as select. A comma B comma C times four base. X star from V one. And if we want to use this like a uh, like a table, we can make um, equations in the where clause where A is equal to one or b is equal to five and get our information now very handy to do that but um what if we want to get the value for this column over here that we're getting um question column underscore is Short, uh, shorthand for saying, hey, there's nothing I can call there. So this is the quiz. So if we want to be able to select column C, because we can't do a select C from V1, because it doesn't know anything about a column C in that view, what we have to do is go back to our great view. Let's call it view 1A. 
and give an alias. And let's call this I see. Now we can select B from B1A. Ta da! Now let's go to a materialized view. Great. Materialized view. As select a, let's change it around. B comma A comma C times five as base and there we go. If we do a select star from B2, you see that we get the the B first, A second, and my C is defined there. And we can uh, be happy with that. Now, the trick is, what if we, we've created materialized view, we've made a snapshot, a serialized snapshot at the point of time. Well, let's say someone else comes through and they update the table that we're using. So they update base. And we're going to set the value of B equals to 999, where the value of A is equal to 7. Now, if we go back and do our select from V2, you'll notice A is equal to 7, but B has not been set to 99. So, we're getting the values from the time that we created the materialized view, the snapshot. So what do we do if we want to update that information? It's so like you're running a stock quote quoting system that's five minutes delayed and the five minutes is up. Um, all you have to do is use the keyword refresh. Two. And if we run back, and do our select star, we notice that now B has the proper value, which is what we wanted. Thank you for watching this, this presentation on materialized views. Now, MySQL doesn't have materialized views in the, the main distribution. Uh, there are wonderful projects like that by Justin Swanhart to add materialized views, but it's not part of the mainstream code. So you've now been exposed to materialized views in Postgres. If you have an idea for a subject that you want to learn more about, please let me know. Leave your feedback on YouTube for this presentation or get a hold of me on Twitter at Stoker. And thank you for watching.